Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this project, they're going to be carving a brown trout. And so I'm starting that series today. And I'm going to show you the pattern here. This is the pattern that I use. And this is from, uh, this is a Brad Keetrick pattern. And I got that from uh, fishcarver.com. And it's in a book. He's got, a, there's a book of them. And I don't know the name of the book right off the top of my head, but you can go check it out. What I've done was I took the pattern and I scanned it and then brought it into Photoshop and sized it and then printed it out to the size I want. Also, the pattern, I don't have it out here, but the original pattern, the mouth was closed on this brown trout pattern. So while I had it in Photoshop, I redrew the head, took, just kind of erased the head part and redrew it to an open mouth. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I've already got the, the blank cut out, did that on the bandsaw. And you can see that the leave the tail on. That's my favorite way to do it now. And then I'll add the fins later. Uh, but I chamfered the edges 45 degrees to just give me a little bit less to have to carve. So I want to talk about something else real quick. And I've made a short video on this a while back. I'm going to be giving away this cuts all rotary bird kit from Bearwood Supply Company. This is a eighth inch shaft kit. It's the very coarse finish and it's a, a taper, a sphere, a ball nose, and a flame. Uh, but I'm going to be giving that away at the end of this video series. And I'm also going to be giving away this colored pencil sketch that I did of the brown trout. And I'm going to start doing this, I think, on all my carvings. I'm going to start drawing out the piece and uh, kind of giving myself an idea of where I'm going with it and what I want the base to look like. But uh, I'm gonna be giving that away. And in order to win, all you have to do is be a subscriber or subscribe to the channel. Uh, be sure to leave me comments in the comment section. And I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up on the videos if you're liking them. And uh, be sure to hit the notification bell if you wanna keep up with the future videos coming up in this project. But at the end of this series, I will do, I will use a random generator and I'll pick two winners, uh, one for the birds and one for the fish. So. With that, I'm gonna get the camera turned around here and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start off using this, this uh, extra coarse ball nose. This is a quarter inch shaft, uh, but this is a cuts off. So I'm gonna start off by just hogging off all this material on the edges and around, and then I'll uh, start shaping it up. So I did a video a while back on these uh, on the tools that I use and on these bits but I don't I didn't show how they work in the video so I'm gonna show you how fast these guys work and uh, talk a little bit about safety with them uh, one is I normally try to keep my thumb on the work to guide me sometimes you may see me doing that it just depends on what I'm doing but most of the time I'm going to try to keep a, a, a guide there. But one of the things you don't want to do, and this is turning clockwise, one of the things you don't want to do is when you get to the end, come over because it'll, it'll kick back. So you got to be careful of that. And another thing is to be sure and use eye protection because this throws out a lot of, a lot of wood. See also, I've got my center line drawn on here. I want to go work right up to that center line without taking it off right, right away until I get it mostly shaped down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I got it roughed down here. Still got some more to go, but I want to just stop check the pattern here real quick. Make sure I'm kind of staying in the parameters there. Need a lot of work on the head. I tend to leave that to the last. And it's pretty close. draw my center line here just so it stays good and visible All right, so I just want to make sure I still got some some to go down on. So I'm going to make sure I'm not going too far. I heard the old saying is you can take more wood off, but you can't put more wood back on. <laughs> so. All right, I'm close. I'm going to. I'm gonna keep on working here. swap over to this fine grit ball nose it still removes a lot of wood but I'm to the point where I want to start kind of refining the shape so when I get ready to start sanding it it'll uh, it won't be as won't be as many tool marks This is the fine grit ball nose from Cuts All. So what I've done now is I've gone on here and I've temporarily drawn the scale and eye placement and mouth shape. And all I've done was um, I colored in with graphite pencil on the lines on both sides. And then I placed it on, lined it up, and then just drew over the lines on this side on head, mouth, and eyes and everything. And that kind of transfer the mark. Then I go in and make sure they're on there good. And I do this mainly to, to keep in my head the eye position 
in the gill position because they need to be the same on both sides. And this one is off just a little bit, but I'll tweak it. That's why I've drawn it on there helps me do that. So, um, and I'm just going to end up set, grinding all this off, but it just gives me an idea right now how it's shaping up. So, and right now it's starting to come around, I think. Everything is in line where it should be. Like I say, the eyes are off just a little bit, but the gill placement is real close to the same. Uh, shape of the mouth is off just a little bit. And like I say, I'll take all that down. So it's getting closer. I'll work on it some more here. What I've done here was I took this smaller taper to start working on this mouth. Get this mouth a little closer, a little even. It's always because of the curve of the fish, when you lay the patterns out, it'll be the it'll be different on one side and the next. And because of the shape of the fish, the motion that I'm putting in it, basically this side is longer than this side. So when I put the pattern on this side and line the head up where it's supposed to go, you notice it doesn't line up with the body on this side. So it comes way back, but that's just the physics of the paper. So it's right. So don't let that fool you. It's, the pattern will be right, just not laid out on the deal. So basically what you do is you do this end and then you move it down when you're working on this end and it'll be right. <laughs> and it does the same way on this side when you get it up here because of the movement of the, of the body, you see how much it's off. But if I pulled it down where it's supposed to go in line with this part of the anatomy, it's closer to where it is. And I cut this bigger on this end. I cut it bigger anyway, just like, like the rest of the fish. I cut it bigger than what I need and then bring it down to it. So, anyway, let me get started here. I'm going to say this, since I put this fine on here because the tool marks are smaller than what this, the extra course gives it. And then I'll go over it with the sanding drum this padded sandy drum and start taking it down and then I'll also do some by hand as well so a little thick back here so I'm going to take this down a little bit more back here m sanding pad this one's a i forget what grit this one is it's pretty coarse i think it's about a 60 grit 60 or 80 i think it, no i think it's 80 grit i'd like to find some 60 grit
Okay, so I got it kind of rough sanded, rough shape for where I want it to be. And so I'm gonna work on the tail a little bit, getting it down closer to where it's supposed to be. And I still got some more sanding to do, or more grinding to do. So let me get started on that here. So I'm gonna get this tail down to where it's supposed to be. I drew it out here where it where the body ends and the tail starts on both sides. So I'm just gonna get it down to that. I won't start the fin detail until until I get ready to start doing the fins. So that's a little closer to where it's going to be. All right, I'm gonna leave it thick like that until I get ready to actually put the detail in. I just wanted to make sure I get the, the caudal peduncle area here. That's the $10 word for today, caudal peduncle, which is this area right here. And I'll probably still bring it down just a little bit thinner. Let's say when I get down here to this detail area. 
So I'm gonna define this caudal peduncle area a little bit more with the little small flame burr, cuts off flame burr. Okay, so you can kind of see of the fine that let me put this ball on here. Right now I've got that a pretty abrupt in there, but I'll blend that into the tail when I get ready to uh, when I get ready to uh, do the tail detail. So I'm gonna stop right there on the tail. Cause I don't wanna get it too thin cause I'm gonna be run, handling around quite a bit. I don't wanna get it too thin and damage it. So I'm gonna stop right there at that thickness. The motion's about where I want it. It won't be quite that extreme once I get it down, but it'll be close. So I think I wanna work on getting the head shaped a little bit now getting the head and mouth fixed up a little bit and for that I'm going to draw redraw this pattern so it's pretty close Yeah, I'm gonna get me some go get me some reference photos and start putting some detail uh, on these gills. Just an indication of detail. So let me get me some reference photos here. Okay, so I got some uh, reference photos here. Uh, this is from a drawing that I really liked, and I think it's pretty accurate. This is a, a carving, and I don't remember who carved this. So I'll have to look it up. This is an actual photo, and then this is a carving by Bob Berry. So, and he gave me permission to uh, use this photo as a car as a reference. And then I have a couple of um, uh, drawings and a real photo here. These are more for the spot patterns that I'll use later on. Then I've got some more on my phone, but these were my my favorites that I that I'm gonna really pay attention to and go off of. I contemplated on cutting the head off to do the detail inside the mouth and I still may do that but I hate doing that <laughs> just because it's so nerve wracking <laughs> I've done that a couple times on a couple fish but um, I may just see what I can do by just by inside the mouth there's not a whole lot of detail that I need to go in through on there, except for maybe the, the teeth. So, um, and, and I may still do it, I don't know. And if I do that, it'll come out to about right here. And then of course I'll cut off the top. I may still do it. I don't know. I'm going to finish drawing on the pattern though and work a little bit on the pattern. Okay, so I've got all the details drawn on here. And I 
going to kind of start taking down, like I say, refining some of those. That way they're in there and I don't have to draw them on every time. So I'm pretty happy with that, with that look so far. Just need to refine that, so that's what I'm going to do here. So what I'll do is I'll just cut down here a little bit. Start these kill details. I'm not cutting very deep, 16th of an inch or so. this little skew and just cut right up to that line I chose to do a brown because it's fresh in my mind I just did a you may have seen it. I just did a online class with Josh Googie for Rainbow, and it's all fairly similar from this and a Rainbow. So uh, I did do a, a bluegill in between here, but this is still fresh in my mind on the Rainbow. So I wanted to uh, get it done. I've done a brown before, and it was uh, it was okay. I liked it. I mean, for a first attempt, it was all right. It did sell. <laughs> I did sell it, so. but I didn't put it in competition. The only two fish I've had in competition is the uh, largemouth and a crappie, white crappie. So, but this one will go in competition this August at the World Taxidermy Fish Carver Championship. If I think it's good enough, that is. We'll see how it turns out. That's my goal anyway. I've seen these uh, little mini micro sanders 
online a couple times, seen people using them. And it's, uh, there's a, each color is a different course. I mean, that's extra course and coarse and medium and then fine. And I forget what grit they are. Let's see if that shows what grit they are. That tore. But it goes from a 60 grit to a 240 grit. So everything in between. But they roll around and once the paper gets uh, worn out, you can push it around and roll it around a little bit. But it's really good for getting into these little tight spots after you get this done so I've been wanting to buy some and I finally saw some in Hobby Lobby and I finally broke down bottom and I use these regular old fingernail files a lot too to get in and do some of this but these are a little more finer detailed and let you get in a little tighter a little more control. So you're gonna be seeing me use these quite a bit in the future, because I, so far I really like them. I guess you can use the round end too. But I like that little sharp tip. That's what attracted me to them. Especially for when I get ready to get into fins. Let me get this extra course one back up here. So. It just lets me clean up those knife cuts. All right, so I got some of the pattern in, and I, I will probably go over some of that again. Uh, but right now, I want to uh, work on getting some of the tool marks out from the bit. So I got a, uh, this is a, two, uh, a 240 grit on this padded sander. And I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing and take off the uh, tool marks. I think that's going to do it for part one of this brown trout wood carving series. So far I'm happy with it. It's coming along nice, I think. I still got some hand sanding to do, which I'll do off camera. And then I got to finish up the details on the gills and the mouth, and I'll start that in part two coming up. Uh, probably be doing shaping the fins in part two as well. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave for me in the comment section below. And uh, if you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you want to keep up with these videos. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be giving away this Cuts All Rotary Burr Kit from Bearwood Supply Company. And all you have to do to win it is be a subscriber, leave me some comments, thumbs up maybe. And at the end of the series, I will be uh, using a random generator and I'll pick a winner for this. And I've already took it inside, but I'm also going to be giving away the colored pencil sketch that I did. Uh, to start this vid uh, this series off so appreciate you watching and i'll see you on part two